additional conversations with Tim. I'm very, very excited to have Eric Dillon with us today. He's the CEO of Connexus. And uh, hey, how are you doing, Eric? I'm doing great, Tim. Uh, it's a crazy time in everybody's uh, world, I'm sure, but uh, I'm doing great. That's awesome. Well, you know, I remember the first time that I met you was actually in my EMBA course. I'm sure we've probably met before in some of the chamber events and stuff that I was attending from my position on the board. But uh, I remember when you were talking to us in, a, in our EMBA class, I was kind of captivated by your story and your leadership. So I was really, I'm really excited to have you on the call today. Are you able to maybe give us a quick rundown about yourself and your organization? Yeah, so um, anyway, uh, thanks for the invite. Uh, that I, I do a lecture in the MBA program once a year, and it's one of the highlights of the year for me. I love uh, connecting with the students and learning from them at the same time. So uh, cool place to meet. Um, so I've been at Connexus for um, about a decade, say 10 years, and uh, we're Saskatchewan's largest financial cooperative. So we serve about 130,000 Saskatchewan residents and about 20,000 Saskatchewan businesses as their financial partner. That's awesome. That is amazing. Um, now, I, I hear of Connexus all the time. Um, like you said, you guys are one of the uh, biggest ones. Are you only based in Saskatchewan or are you out in Saskatchewan as well? No, we're a provincially regulated credit union. So there's, uh, we could become a federally regulated credit union if we wanted to move outside of Saskatchewan's borders, but we were born and raised here, very proud to be from Saskatchewan and very motivated to do what we can to serve Saskatchewan. So that's where we, uh, that's where we do business today. That is great. That is great. It's great to have a company that is Saskatchewan based and still doing great business because I hear great things about your company or your organization. Uh, so as the CEO of uh, this organization, well, what would you say is your leadership style um, right now and how does it compare to your leadership style before the crisis? Um, yeah, I, I would say it's a hard question to answer, Tim. You know, I think certainly in a you know situation like this that frankly all of us as leaders have never seen before. We all had, uh, I would say, business continuity plans, but none contemplated a health pandemic on top of an economic crisis. Um, you know, so I think leadership, uh, this is not something we studied for as leaders. At, at the same time, um, I would say the world is such a complicated place today and there's so much, I don't know if you've heard the term VUCA, volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous that leaders are finding that they're having to change styles and almost adapt and learn in real time. And I would say that this, this pandemic crisis has really just accelerated the speed with which leaders needed to operate and make decisions. So I don't think there's a style that leaders, at least the leaders that I um, admire and you know have been mentored by in the past that you kind of rely on all the time, but it's more around just the adaptability and flexibility of leaders. Sometimes you need to be directive. Sometimes you need to be collaborative. Sometimes you need to just get out of the way actually as a leader. That's and true. so I think what's happened is you just had to kind of go between those things more rapidly and more quickly in a very difficult situation that we're living with right now. It's not just one way, right? Um, different uh, types of leadership have to come into play, especially when you're dealing with things that you haven't uh, dealt with before. So no I guess what are some of the things that you are doing to motivate your staff uh, that are working from home? Because um, we know there's a lot of distractions uh, with working from home. Uh, I myself, uh, during the day, I do a lot of work from home, so and my kids are with me. So I'm trying to balance between uh, my work and making sure that the kids are fed and also making sure that they're doing their homework too. So um, as a leader, how do you motivate your staff to still perform at a level uh, that is high enough or higher than what it would be if they were in the office? Yeah, I would offer two things. The first thing that I would say is we have um, probably 500 people or so working from home right now. And um, surprisingly, some of the productivity has actually gone up in some teams. So the work from home environment has been more, uh, it works better for their, for their life. And so we're kind of interested to learn more about that. 
but it, you know, I think it's everybody talks about working from home, and of course, we're connecting on Zoom, and it's a platform people are getting comfortable with, as as they are with Teams and others. And and we talk about working from home, but what's really happening is we're all at home in a once in a hundred year pandemic trying to work. And that's, that's a very different thing than working from home. And so, you know, I think we need to be gracious with ourselves and others about expectations, uh, recognizing that, you know, people might have kids at home like you and I do, or they might be caring for an aging parent or worried about an aging parent that might be dealing with um, COVID-19 in particular. And so everybody's an individual that has a set of circumstances, none of which we always know as, uh, as employers. I think the goal is to be gracious and to meet, meet people where they are. The second thing I would say is that, you know, times like these really show you why people work for organizations here. And what we're seeing is that, you know, times like this where it's a bit crazy and a bit chaotic is it's really grounded people. And uh, I've been just unbelievably amazed by how much work has gotten done in our organization through very difficult circumstances, very trying times. It's been, I won't remember many things fondly from 2020 um, and COVID, but it, but that's one thing that I will, it brings a smile to my face every time I think about it. That's, that's really great. You know, I, in my previous podcast, uh, I was talking to somebody in New York and, you know, she said almost the same thing that you did because uh, right now um, the way that businesses treat their employees and treat the public is going to determine how they move forward, right? And how happy the employees are going to be. And, you know, it's, uh, I'm really excited to hear your response about meeting the employees where they're at because you don't understand, you don't always know what their circumstances are. And I think that is very, very important to know right now. There's a lot of people that are scared of COVID-19. Uh, how are you bringing calmness in the midst of all this chaos to the people that are still working at the branch? Well, I think we moved very quickly to um, to encourage people not to come in. You know, I think the challenge for us is we're deemed an essential service and we see ourselves that way, that the movement of money at times like these is incredibly important because, you know, even though economic activity is challenged, that which is still being done needs to happen to keep uh, the economy going and and to stave off maybe an even greater economic crisis. So we take that responsibility very seriously to manage the amount of contact even our staff group is having. You know, we very to uh, all the social distancing practices put in, um, you know, sneeze guards, restricted the number of people in a brand of managing all of the expectations around physical distancing and essential services and uh, and then doing the split shift with staff because even when staff are in the branch you know it's it's a, certainly a more stressful time than it normally is you know they're wiping down surfaces and machines between every every member so with it, then when they're split shifting they're getting a bit of a break uh, from that to, to be able to recover and um, and then continue to serve our members and interestingly for us you know even though we're a credit union where we compete with very large uh, banks and our satisfaction rates in the pandemic have actually gone up materially oh, wow. yeah because we've you know a bunch of them to talk to them about how to bank differently to protect them and us because it's not just our staff we're protecting but we don't want our our members our customers coming in and being exposed to something that they don't have to if they don't have to come in so uh yeah i think we're we're um you know certainly very proud of the way we've, we've responded over the last nine weeks uh, that is really amazing. Are you finding that uh, more and more people are um, able to do all the banking then uh, online and from home and don't have to come into the branch as uh, more than before? Yeah, no, for sure. I think people have really respected that. Uh, lots of the what we call transactions, so depositing a check or a bill payment. I think most people were doing most of that online or remotely today. And then we quickly moved all of what we call our advisory services. So if you want to buy a house or you want to talk about your retirement plan, where you might want some advice, all of that for us has been also moved so that they can engage with a member just like we are over video, quickly understand how we can help them and get them some advice. And then anything that we need signed, we can actually ship out to them to have that signed and sent back to us securely 
uh, via an email uh, service that we offer today. Oh, that's awesome. That's really great. Because uh, you guys deal with a lot of people in the rural areas, right? Yeah, we do. And, uh, we deal from La Ronge in the north to Cornac in the south, so it's quite a wide area. That's great that you're finding that these strategies work in, say, up north as well, where maybe internet service may not be as good. Yeah, well, again, like uh, all I know is the the feedback we get when we surveyed our members and the satisfaction they have now has gone up. I think they're very um, content with the way that we've responded to the health challenge and the way that we've still been able to get them access to their money or new money if they're still buying a house or buying a business because that is still happening today. And that hasn't been compromised in any way. That is great. That is great. You know, I'm a big believer that in crisis, there are opportunities. Uh, there was a news article a couple of days ago that, uh, that Twitter is saying that after everything goes back to normal, mm -hmm. a lot more of their employees are going to be working from home because, like you said, this saw productivity uh, went up. Went up. Has there been any uh, positive discoveries in your organization that you have seen during this process that you may maybe explore to put in place uh, going forward after things get back to its new normal, I guess? Well, I, I think clearly, you know, the, the things we just talked about in terms of how we've scaled up our ability to serve people through these mediums, um, you know, and I just ask you to close your eyes and imagine for a minute that you're sitting there and you have a financial life and I know you're, uh, you own your own business, but maybe you have a retirement plan and maybe, a, you know, or you have a farm on the side or you're a shareholder in a business. And so imagine me sitting here and then also in addition to me, we've got a wealth advisor and a small business advisor and we're all able to connect with you like this, the three of us and say, well, here's the pieces of Tim's finances that I that I'll help and hey, here's my partner from wealth management and they can help you with that part and my other partner from small business and they can help you with that and we can just wrap our arms around you doing it. It might actually be more convenient than what we had, be doing, had been doing. So I think we're watching that really closely and we're gonna ask our members, you know, and get some feedback from them about how they, uh, how they experienced those changes too because for us as a, when you're a member owned company, that's a really important step. That is true. You know, as, as someone that banks, if I think if I have all this set of experts on a call together working for me, I think that would make me feel really special. And because now I don't have to make an appointment with this person, make an appointment with that person or that person. Everybody's there and everybody's working together to look after my needs. So I, I think that's a really good initiative uh, if you guys can move that forward. Yeah, no. I think we're just some, that's an example of something we're thinking about. I wouldn't say we're moving it forward today, but we're wondering okay. whether that might might be better for consumers ultimately. And then you might actually get ex access to better expertise because part of the challenge today is if you went in to see a wealth advisor, well, the particular person you need might be at an appointment in Fort Capel today or in Lumsden today. And rather than, well, doesn't matter where they are, we can bring them together and just say, hey, Tim, talk about your uh, your hopes, your goals, and your dreams for your money, and then we're here to help you make it happen. That's, that is true. No, that, that absolutely makes sense. So, you know, there's a lot of small businesses in, in our province. Um, I think the rate of small businesses have actually gone up in the last few years. Uh, there's a lot of CEOs of smaller companies that are all trying to navigate uh, their companies through the effects of COVID-19. Uh, as one of the most respected CEOs in the province, what advice would you give to some of these people? Yeah, I mean, it's just a few thoughts. One, one would be um, ma manage yourself. So it connects us when we're building leaders to work and take on more responsibility inside the organization. We always talk in terms of lead self, then you can lead others, and then you can lead enterprises. So it's really important at times like this where there's high stress, high uncertainty to, to practice self-care, physical, mental, because again, you're not in any position to lead others if you're struggling with those things. So to be really mindful of how to manage your own self-care. And with that comes attitude. Again, I think it's really easy in today's uh, time get down or frustrated or discouraged and you know your employees are watching closely in terms of you know your enthusiasm for getting through what is a very difficult time 
And then the last thing you actually said it earlier, but we were just talking about this in our business the other day was that, you know, in these kinds of times, opportunities are always present. If, if you're, um, if you're watching and if you're, you know, if you're able to see them as they pass you by. Mm -hmm. So the world's, the world's changing, but with any kind of disruption or change comes, comes opportunity and don't lose sight of those as a small business, because one of the advantages of being small and we perceive ourselves to be a small financial services company, even though we're a big Saskatchewan company, we still compete against much bigger global companies. Mm -hmm. If you're small, you can actually respond much more quickly uh, than others potentially in your industry. So what are the ways in which you could immediately jump on and seize opportunities and be better positioned potentially coming out of a very difficult time like this? Uh, and you might not have had the time to stop and reflect and think that uh, that the world is offering all of us today uh, as we sit at home and and uh, and read books and do other things. So uh, use that time to think about what opportunities might exist for you and how you could quickly seize on them and use your size to a, almost like a ninja like advantage. Yeah, that is great. I think that is great advice. I like the, you got to take care of yourself. And then you gotta take care of others and then enterprise. I, I like that uh, shared approach because it's very, very important. Um, and I really wanna thank you for that advice because I think a lot, of, a lot of our small businesses uh, that are struggling right now, a lot of their leaders could really learn from that and learn from, from some of your insights here. So I guess one last question I wanna ask you is that if there's one thing that you wanna say to your staff at, uh, at uh, Connexus and your customers, what would it be? It would be, um, it's a very trying time, as I said earlier, for, for everybody. Governments trying to figure out how to support, um, you know, people in Saskatchewan, businesses like ours, small, medium, large. Um, there are lots of places in the world that would want to be as resilient as Saskatchewan. And we have great big open spaces and hopefully very soon we get through some of the outbreaks that have happened in the northern part of the province that I know, you know, people I talk to are, are um, worried about, but I think we can get our, a handle on those. And if and when we do, we, we will come out of this. this. This will pass. And I think Saskatchewan has what very few places in the world does in terms of a real um, kind of resilience and stick to and uh, we believe in ourselves. And I think um, that that's going to show up in spades uh, very soon here. And I, and, I, and I think I'm pretty optimistic about the future of Saskatchewan, given the very creative people we have here and, and our ability to come together as a very small province and make, and make things happen. And, you know, just before the pandemic, there was very exciting things happening in our province around entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I'm of the view that those things will bounce back uh, sooner rather than later. And, uh, and I can't wait to be part of it. That's great. You know, through, through all this, there's been many things that I've seen that has come out. A lot of people supporting local businesses um, instead of maybe the Amazons and things like that. Um, a lot of people, a lot of people also very patriotic about a province and about a country. Um, I'm a person that travels a lot, and anytime I'm traveling, if you see someone from Saskatchewan, you know it because they are wearing the Saskatchewan proud or their Rough Rider jersey or something yeah. like that shirt, right? Uh, we're very proud people, we're very resilient people, and we're very supportive, come together type of people. So, absolutely, I see us getting through this. Uh, probably a lot better than the rest of the world because of the type of people that we are. And like you said, we believe in ourselves and that's a great thing. Maybe, you know, maybe to frame I, it a different way, if we could all choose as people where we'd want to live to go through something like this, I'd pick Saskatchewan a uh, hundred times out of a hundred. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I have friends that were living in Mexico or living out in Arizona and when they started going now, they all said, I'm coming back home to Saskatchewan. Because, uh, like you said, yeah. it's a great place to be and a great place to go through this since we have to go through this right now anyways. You know, yeah. I really want to thank you so much for, for uh, joining me today and uh, coming on the call. I know you have a really busy schedule. Uh, I really, really appreciate this. Thank you so much. Yeah.
great to connect with you, Tim, and thanks for doing this for the community. I think these uh, insights from your podcast uh, will be helpful for people. So uh, keep it up. Bravo. Thank you so much. Have yourself a great day. Yeah, take care.